cooking classes um, in different places. We have done in Guelph, Hamilton, uh, and different towns around Hamilton. So this time we decided to have them in, Pus in uh, Grimsby, which is, uh, which is a great privilege. So uh, some of you have been last time, and some of you are first time. We hope you enjoy it. So uh, this time, this is going to be a full cooking class. Last time we had like uh, a shorter introduction about the advantage of becoming a vegetarian or vegan. Some of you might be already vegan or vegetarian. I don't know, but we hope we can help you and you can learn some new recipes, you know, some new uh, ideas, some new uh, ways how to cook, how to go vegan or vegetarian. So this is um, a great lifestyle. Uh, I personally feel great and uh, using uh, uh, grains, nuts, veggies and fruits. Uh, this is part of my diet, of course, and uh, cooked food. And um, so we'll have, um, we'll have today uh, quite some uh, recipes. You've got the books. And uh, if you'll have questions, you can ask during the class or afterwards. And you'll be able to sample uh, after the food is presented as well. So today I'd like to introduce um, uh, our amazing cook. We have different cooks, so uh, but today we'll have uh, uh, Melina. Hope she is uh, she is here. Uh, so they they got busy. Yes, I just call her. Okay. Yeah. I think we are ready. Yeah, so you see <laughs> Enough waiting. <laughs> so. Uh, where is she? Come on, chef. <laughs> this is our main chef, by the way. Yes. So, <laughs> she will be our uh, chef today, and uh, uh, definitely you will enjoy uh, the recipes, what is presented. So uh, I'll let her go ahead and just uh, start doing her business. She knows, uh, she knows it best. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe 100% what you see. <laughs> I try. I enjoy cooking and I love eating as you should see <laughs> So um, I also love to surround myself with good helpers. Thank you, Nada. You're welcome. <laughs> and Doreen. And um, I hope that today you will forgive me if I'm rushed a little because I think I've undertaken a, a big job. I have all three course meal to present to you within an hour. So I hope that uh, if I'm pretending that I'm cooking, you will forgive me. <laughs> and when you get home and, and do the recipe, don't pretend, do it for real. <laughs> yes. Okay, today we are going uh, to first start with, uh, as you have seen on our menu, with pumpkin what I call pumpkin, some of the butternut, buttercup soup. This soup, uh, first of all, is gluten-free. It's healthy. All our meals today, are, all our dishes are gluten-free. Uh, it is tasty, it's economical, and it's easy to make. So what we do is we just put the butternut pumpkin, buttercup pumpkin, we put diced onions, they don't have to be very fine, then we put diced celery or chopped celery, red pepper, we put some uh, peeled garlic, do you crush garlic or just put No, you don't need to crush anything. Even when you are doing it, you don't have to chop it as fine as this. You can just put big pieces. Chunks. Big chunks, yes. Then uh, we put uh, parsley. We'll pretend it's a bunch, but it's not. Also, uh, some fresh thyme. And we put a little bit of turmeric. Just a tiny bit. Uh, according to recipe, um, the recipe is big for six people, for a family of six. You can add a little bit more, but try it first. And another thing that you will find that these recipes freeze well. And 
we put a little bit of vegetable seasoning, can be of your choice. This one that I'm using, Veget. Veget, oh. Yeah. Is a mixture of Vegeta or Vegeta. It's a Croatian product and uh, it is good. Also, I have this product, which is my case, chicken style instant broth and seasoning. This is good for vegans also. So sometimes I mix them together, sometimes I put one or the other. So put that in, then we put some water. Now when you're putting water in, just make sure you cover the vegetables in your pot because that water will cook the vegetables plus give you broth for the right thickness of your soup. kind enough love to come around and just show the people how much water there is. Just walk around and show them. Get with them so it's very easy, very quick, and yet it is tasty. Now that soup, when you want to serve, just sprinkle a little bit of olive oil and put, sprinkle a little spoonful of nutritional yeast. Do you know what nutritional yeast is? Everybody knows? No? Okay, the nutritional oh. yeast is a product from barley, originally. You know when they make beer? Well, I don't drink beer, this but the yeast dry. of the, the, the froth that forms on top of the beer is taken, collected, and then uh, dried in a rolling, um, what would be called rollers. And when it's dried and rolled, it's put again to dehydrate once again. And this is what it is. It's rich in vitamin B. And uh, young mothers who are preparing for breastfeeding their babies, are good to eat this because it helps the flow of milk. It's very tasty also. It has a savory, nutty, cheesy flavor. It's very nice. So this is how we would serve that soup of ours. And any questions on our soup dish? Yes? I know where butternut Butternut? Is, but I don't know where butternut Buttercup. Buttercup. You know, um, it's a green pumpkin that has quite um, uh, sort of indented ribs. It's round, and you usually, uh, acorn, I think it's called acorn. Oh, okay. Acorn, is it acorn? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Um, we call it buttercup. I come from New Zealand, so we call it buttercup, and that is um, what I know. But I think it's called acorn here, or acorn. So, any other question? Uh, this is all the yeast. Uh, you can get it at Fortino's in a health food section, uh, with uh, in a section where Red Bob uh, Mills products are. You can just ask them in the health food section. Uh, no, not in the fridge. Or you can go to yeah. Bulk Barn and buy it in Bulk Barn Foods as well. That's cheaper over there. And Bulk Barn is much cheaper. You buy how much you want. Yeah. It's more economical. Let's not say cheap. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. All right. <laughs> you see? That's why I like it. Be my, my helper. <laughs> All right. If there's no more questions, we will uh, go to serious business now. Go to a, a different okay. type of food. Do you need any? Uh, not really. Okay. So I need that, and then we start. I with need the other one. this, yes, and I, I need 
A pot, please. A small pot. You need small pot? Yes. Bunny. Uh, what's next on our um, on our product uh, on our list is actually give me a ball, please, Nada. Now, any one of you use a skinner? Which one are you doing? I need to use this after. I need a ball. Yes, there is still ball. Any one of you use a skinner? Which quinoa? Quinoa is uh, yeah, quinoa. Uh, there is red, black, and I just use the pile one. And the one that I use is um, in a flake form, uh, which is quite quite easy. Again, you can get this also at Old Barn. Um, so we have cooked some soya beans. Soya beans are good source of protein, good source of calcium, niacin, which is vitamin B family, and um, good stable food. Uh, you can make it in a variety of dishes. Uh, you can eat it with tomato sauce, uh, you can um, make it into milk, which my daughter and her husband do a lot. And uh, you can cook it, crush it like this, and make it into patties with other things. So this is what I will show you what I do. This one is very... Um, can I have the glass, please? Glass. Um, I just mix variety of grains, like uh, beans, then um, we, cook, we put parsley. Where is my parsley? It's coming. Coming. Okay. Just a second. I want for that. Getting slow, my dear. I know, at my old age, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> we put parsley in. Then uh, after parsley, we put onions and flax seeds. The seed you don't have to grind, just put it as is. After flax seed, we put um, hemp. Uh, this uh, on the recipe it tells you hemp flakes, but it's not hemp flakes, it's hemp hearts. Um, you can get it also at Bauban or a health food store, at Fortino's, or wherever, whichever it is most convenient for you. So you put ham in, then you put uh, quinoa flakes. After quinoa flakes, you put nutritional yeast. And um, gluten-free crackers. You know, you can get gluten-free crack crackers in various health food stores, but at Costco, they have real nice economical size and price crackers that is made out of sweet potato and grains or just multi-grain cracker. This particular one is a multi-grain cracker. So the crackers, uh, what uh, has done, been done to it, just while it is in a bag, you just keep crushing the bag. And that way you don't get too much of a powder form, you get just the right consistency. And then again, we put a little bit of vegeta. I listed this vegeta, but or vegeta. But the thing is, you can use McKay's instant Season. chicken seasoning, but that one is not readily available always. So this vegeta, the particular one that I showed you, is always at Fortinas on the shelf. I'm not sure which child it is, I think aisle four at Fortinas, <laughs> and uh, you can get it all the time. Then um, we put some crushed garlic. I don't know what that is doing here. Oh, that is the, the water in case we need. I forgot to... Yeah, that's the water that we need to cook it. I forgot to add instant beef like broth, which is suitable for vegan. This is bisto, brown bisto that you can get at a supermarket at Fortinas. Now, all I do with this, can you get me the try?
the heavy one. All I do is now just mix it all together. If it is a little bit dry, you add the liquid to the beans have like? cooked now. Neither. The big heavy try. <laughs> Cast iron one. You just keep mixing until it all sort of emulsifies. It's a good feeling, you know, you just squeeze it with your hands. It's nice and soft. And I bike it, uh, you can uh, lightly grease your biking tray, but this particular one is a non-stick, so I just put it without any oil or fat or anything like that. And then just tuck it in your hands, form a ball, press it down, and put it. That's all it takes. Any questions for this? You cook it until about 15 minutes on either side at 375. But you know, um, every oven is different. So you might cook it a little bit longer or a little less. Yes. The they were they were wet when you put them in. Yes. Okay. So I was wondering where you got your liquid from. They were cooked. Okay. Yes, cooked soybeans. And they do cook quite long. So Unless what you, you need, to, yeah, you need to do is I think we'll leave it. We won't okay. make it anymore. But uh, I just want uh, to show where is Julia again. Uh, Julia, thank you. If you would be kind enough, just show uh, the people. Uh, just to see the consistency. Later on, we are all going to sample all of this, so it's worth the wait. I'm going to take this now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, any more questions on this? I feel I'm all wired here. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Are you going to do this one now? Want to, I think we'll blame him for that, shall we? <laughs> okay, the next one is our spinach sauce. And I tell you, this is a very healthy and delicious dish. With spinach sauce, what I did, I just steamed the spinach. Instead of steaming it here, as you see, we are not very well set up here with this little stove. And with this spinach, in a little pot, I put a bit of oil. And with oil, I put a little bit of gluten-free all-purpose flour, which again, you can get at Bolfa. But if you don't uh, mind having gluten flour, you can just use all-purpose flour. I would suggest you, you buy organic, not non-bleached, without any additives. It's much better for you. Now with this... You want me to mix that for you? Yes. Oh, you have it. Okay. With that, when uh, your... Um, What's the word? Roux, is it roux? Gets slightly golden, just slightly, slightly golden. You add red paprika. And you mix it vigorously. Okay, okay, I'll try. And then, is while you're mixing enough? that. <laughs> Are we going to somewhere with this? Uh, yes, we will. I don't know whether that stove will work, but let's pretend, shall we? Uh, your steamed spinach, you place into your vitamizer together with your milk. And your garlic. I'm being very careful not to use much garlic. I love garlic. Okay, so we need to with this. Excuse the noise, please.
you pour it in. And uh, mix vigorously. Mix vigorously. It will start boiling and it will start fluttering all over the place. So now that be prepared, don't get on your beauty. No, let's, uh, let's pretend it's done so we don't have to splatter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our organizers who organize this hall have organized to have it only for a certain time. And when you try to show them the cooking that you want people to have, um, because I'm doing it, <laughs> I need more time. But never mind, we'll do our best here as we are. Time that we have. Here we go. We'll just add this. I think this is really done. It's done. Oh. Yes. It would be now. It's nice and thick. Now you can and green. This. Now you can take this to wash. Mm -hmm. You can take this to wash. Okay. 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 Yes. And this too. Yes. Will you need this again? Uh, yes. Yes. I will. Now, with this sauce, you can see it, it's a little bit runny, but as it cooks, it gets thickened. And we'll ask Julia again to show you just what it looks like. Um, when I was a child, I never liked this dish. To me, that was just off-putting, the green stuff it was just too much. But my good mother was patient and persistent and consistent and I learned to love it. And it's really delicious dish. Mm -hmm. Now, any question for this? No question? We are going to have, may I have a bowl please? <coughs> have they heard me? Excuse me. Just a bowl please. This is pre-cooked pasta, of course. This is gluten-free pre-cooked pasta. For those who are strict vegans, who still love to eat macaroni cheese, this is an ideal dish. I call it by ziti, because this type of pasta is called ziti in Italian. Just a little bit of a fancy thing to say. So what we have here is a cashew cheese. <coughs> My throat is getting dry, so I have to drink some more water. So we have pre-cooked, I've cooked the pasta before I come in a salty water, which I use sea salt. Then for our sauce, we'll put a cup of cashews. Some people wash the cashews, salt the cashews, but I make sure I buy a good quality cashews, so I don't need to do anything like that. Thank you. 
and with cashews. Is this one cup? This one is one cup. Thanks, Julia. We put a cup of water. And again, we are going to make noise. We will add red peppers and we will chop the peppers as well. Excuse me just a minute, I just need to see what I have. We will add rolled oats and then we add four cups water and might as well add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, I'll just keep handing, huh? Yes, not tomatoes. Not tomatoes? No. Okay, you can have this. Explain what that is. Um, this here is uh, garlic powder, salt, and onion powder. Sorry, not garlic powder. Um, uh, onion powder, cornstarch, raro root, and salt. You're good. <laughs> You're following up. Huh? Yes. You have to and this is? check me. Um, this one is oil. The oil I use, and lemon juice together. The oil I use is uh, sunflower seed oil, but you can use any oil you like. I find that sunflower seed is the lightest to digest for those who, uh, who like oil in their food. Olive oil is fine in salads and just to sprinkle on top. But if you're cooking, I find sunflower seeds is the best. Okay, we'll start it this way first. Increase the speed. But you know what we can do? Yes, darling. We can make a shortcut. Uh -huh. Usually, oops. Or usually what I do, I put it in a pot and bring it to a boil. And just as it starts thickening, I pour it into the pasta. But this time, because you're not going to eat this pasta now, you've got to under the bag. I will pour it directly into pasta. And it does look, the color and everything looks like macaroni and cheese, if you look at it. Mm -hmm. And mix it up, and we'll ask Julia to come again. You see, uh, there is quite a bit of liquid, but... Uh, Julia, she wants it. <laughs> Here, go to show Can you have it in one hand? So, right. in another word, you don't need this? I don't need that now. This stove is very slow. Oh, Julia, I'm so sorry. Can I? Can you come back? <laughs> Are you gonna use this again? Um, yes. Yes. Please. We mix mix some tomatoes into pasta together with the sauce. That gives that 
little flavor. The tomato sauce, the tayos, uh, you can use homemade if you want, you can use the basil sauce, but the best that I find uh, to give the taste, to give the, uh, the right touch to a dish is a raus. Have you heard of rao? R-A-O. Rao, it's Italian uh, tomato sauce with basil and oregano, olive oil, and it's very nice. Yes, it's rather pricey, but it goes a long way. You don't use much. Now, any questions of this dish? Looks good, yeah, hurry up, we want to taste it. Now, that's as far as our dishes are concerned. I'm not going to demonstrate to you how to make a family cabbage salad that is on a menu. Uh, you just shred cabbage, and uh, I usually put lemon juice, olive oil or vegetable oil, a little bit of salt. But if you prefer to put some other dressing, that's just fine. I uh, don't use vinegar due to the fact that vinegar is irritant and it can irritate your liver. And that's why I don't use I just keep away from it. But um, lemon juice does quite nicely with cabbage. Now, with a meal like that, it's hard to know what you would like to have for dessert. I don't normally uh, eat fruit and vegetables at the same time. And I try to keep away from that, except for certain fruits which can go together. And one of those fruits that can be eaten with fruit or vegetable is pineapple. The content of the acidity and uh, uh, vitamins and minerals in pineapple is quite, uh, uh, how shall I say, uh, quite good. Um, what did you say? Yes, with, with uh, vegetable. So for, uh, may I have a point? For this dish, again, it's very quick very easy. May I have two pots, please? <laughs> I'm thinking too, just in case. You okay with this? Yes, thank you. Right. For this, we will have the, the coconut pudding that you buy in the stores. You can buy it just about anywhere. But there is a Chinese store um, that uh, is um, off my street in Hamilton. They have a variety of coconut milk. I try to uh, choose the coconut milk that uh, doesn't have additives. And that to me is the best. So we have here coconut milk. And with that, can I have it um, open, please, the uh, water? We'll add some honey for sweetening. This honey is a raw honey. Uh, our supplier of honey is uh, up north. That is a pure honey. The bees are not being fed on sugar. And it is a delicious honey. Then, um, with, um, with that, can I have a, a fork, plastic fork, please? Plastic fork. With that, you can use arrowroot. Arrowroot is uh, actually a, a plant uh, that um, is quite starchy and if you can't find that or you can find it in a health food stores. I think uh, it's, it's better for you than a cornstarch, but um, you can use cornstarch as well. And you just dissolve arrow root or a cornstarch with water. Ah, my 
I the mess here. I'm tired. Go. You want me to deal with that? You can put a little bit more water in. Then you mix it all and put it to cook. Now you cook it in a low heat, but remember to keep stirring all the time and stirring quite fast because it tends uh, the arrow root tends to settle down at the bottom of the pan and it will burn. So if you keep stirring all the time, it won't burn and it'll start getting thick. When it gets custardy like consistency. Type it off. It's done. Now be careful, it tends to bubble like all can keeps um, falling out. So just be careful with that. And when that one is done, pour it in a, uh, in a serving bowl or a flat dish, whichever you like. I pour it in a flat dish here just for you to be able to see. And uh, <coughs> When it cools down a little, you can pour on top of that your pineapple topping. So we have here crushed unsweetened pineapple, unsweetened pineapple juice, and again we have some cornstarch or arrowroot whichever you have handy to use. And put it to cook. That too will start bubbling and spluttering all over the place, so you have to keep mixing. And make sure that you don't get burnt. I usually mix it with something like this. Yes? Uh, the grape juice, I used to use grape juice before, but then that's an old recipe which you just um, uh, copied. Uh, the the Melchus grape juice has a lot of, um, oh, what was it? I can't remember exactly. has some additives. So I cut out that and use the pineapple juice. But if you don't mind the additive, uh, you can use grape juice. It's a frozen grape juice that you can use, which is just as tasty. You know, for this pineapple topping, you can use any juice you want uh, that agrees with your, you know, with you and your standard. But I don't like to, um, to use anything that has any additive scene. That's why I didn't put the grape juice. Yes. Uh, can we use the juice from the pineapple or uh, if you might crush pineapple in the can, uh, can we use just that juice that you have any additives in the uh, Yes, uh, Yes, you can do that, but it just doesn't give you sufficient enough quantity for the recipe to, uh, uh, to top it off that we did for the pudding. So that's why you can just add water if you like. Um, that way it's just the same as, um, as juice. Just add some liquid so that you can um, make it go a little bit further, that's all. Any other questions? No? Well, if the ladies have put the food out. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Yes, um, we're working on it. So okay. when, uh, when you have uh, poured your uh, pudding into a bowl or a dish and your topping, I just use orange rind to put it on top. It looks attractive 
and uh, you can decorate it with some nice leaves or um, mm -hmm. some berries or whatever. It looks attractive, it's healthy, and it's very economical. So, any other questions? No? Simple, isn't that? That's right. You know, when I um, got married, my husband was very enthusiastic um, with his new wife and started asking uh, people to come to our home. And of course, I wasn't that experienced cook, so I used to get a little bit stroppy at him. <laughs> I would say, why did you bring them? What am I going to feed them with? Oh, you manage, you manage. And you know, it took me a, a little while to learn how to manage. <laughs> and uh, one day, he came home, he picked up three hitchhikers. Okay, before... Finish your story. Uh, sorry. And uh, he brought them inside a house, and uh, I had young children, and he says, this is so-and-so. And I looked at the man, and I thought, the name sounds familiar. One man was a TV producer for uh, uh, television uh, in New Zealand uh, for a program called Sunday's Best. And that program, it was like a, a not a food channel program, but um, something, something similar to that. Uh, there were presentations of various recipes and different dishes and so on. And he said, my husband said, he's going to type you, he's going to film you while you're making our dinner. <laughs> And I looked at him and said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> and anyway, the man was kind. He didn't do it that night. But he did it some other time. And uh, it was quite acceptable by uh, New Zealand public. At that time, the vegetarianism or vegan diet especially was not well known and not well accepted. Now, of course, it's acceptable everywhere around. And uh, this is what um, I have experienced. So my way of cooking might be a little bit unique than most people, but I think it is quite eatable. Okay, okay I think we are ready with our samples. I know you can hardly wait. However, one of our visitors is here and he offered to say grace for our meal, and then we'll go on. How about if we all get up and, and uh, call our heads? Spencer, please. Sure. Hello, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we are very grateful to be fellowshipped here together today with this wonderful uh, cooking class, the vegetarian way. We're grateful to be here to enjoy this wonderful food, and as we strive to make better uh, healthy lifestyle choices in our lives that we will be blessed for doing so. We pray that this food will nourish our bodies and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoy. Okay. Okay. This is, you know, obviously I can do the train. Just take one plate and a soup and this is yours and then you take the plate. Okay.